Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, The Cloud Security Guy, in which we talk about stuff like cloud security and artificial intelligence governance and everything. So I, today I wanted to talk about a very particular topic, a very important topic, which is PCI compliance in the cloud, you know, and how to make the cloud do all the heavy lifting for you when it comes to PCI compliance. Now, PCI DSS is always a hot topic and I have personally seen, overseen PCI compliance in like multiple countries, like many, many times over many, many years, around 10 years actually. So this is based on actual experience and not theory. So we want to talk about PCI DSS in the cloud. Okay, how to make the cloud do all the heavy work for you and how PCI compliance actually can become much easier in the cloud, uh, provided you know what you are doing and like you can use the powerful capabilities of the cloud to do all the work for you. Okay, so before we move ahead, guys, please do like and subscribe to this channel. So you get notified and this will really help the channel grow also. Okay, so just a very brief, like quick overview the what is the PCI DSS? So the PCI DSS, it's like a standard, right? It's designed to reduce payment card fraud. So it's basically a standard about credit card security and how you implement controls around that cardholder data. Who is it's applicable to? So very simply, it's applicable to anyone who stores, processes, or transmits cardholder data. Like whatever type of company you are, if you are having storing, processing, or transmitting cardholder data, you have to be certified to the PCI DSS standard, okay? You have to follow the requirements. It changes depending on the size and depending on the volume, how much cardholder data you have, what you're processing, or what's the nature of your business. It is e-commerce. Is it like a merchant? Is it a brick or mortar? That or those sort of things. But basically, if you're storing, processing, or transmitting cardholder data, you have to follow the PCI DSS standard. Now, this is where I'm talking about the million dollar question. Uh, when we talk about the major cloud providers, AWS, Microsoft Azure, or Google Cloud, or even the other ones like Oracle Cloud, Alibaba, is it easier or harder to be PCI DSS on the cloud? So this is my personal subjective opinion. Uh, I, I'll give that disclaimer. PCI DSS on the cloud, it is easier if you do, to be PCI DSS compliant in the cloud. It's easier if you know what you're doing, if you know what your responsibilities are on the cloud, and how the cloud can do a lot of services for you, it is much, much more easier than on-prem. If you don't do it, like if you are just copy pasting what you're already doing on-prem onto the cloud, it actually becomes harder. So provided you know what the cloud is and how it works, it, it is much more easier than on-prem. And we'll see how that is. Let, let me walk you through it. So when we talk about doing PCI DSS in the cloud, the first thing you need to know more than anything is what your responsibilities are, which brings me to the most important topic which is the shared responsibility model. This is the first thing you should know if you want to be PCA compliant on the cloud, what the cloud provider does and what we do. This is a big topic of confusion. I've seen it a lot of times. A lot of people when they are doing the cloud journey, right? And they're trying to be PCA compliant. They think AWS will do everything or Microsoft will do everything or Google Cloud will do everything. Uh, and they, they don't have to do anything, which is completely incorrect. Or, or they do go the other way also. They sometimes think that I have to do anything. I can't trust the cloud provider for anything which is also another extreme. So you need to find that balance and the best way to know that is to study the shared responsibility model. So I took this diagram from the cloud computing guidelines from PCI. This is basically who does what, okay? So what is it? What is the shared responsibility model? Basically security is shared between the cloud provider and you, okay? So depending on what you're doing, IAS, you have more responsibility. If you're doing platform as a service, then of course it, it's less, it's like a more in the middle. And if you're doing something like SaaS, then a lot of the things will go on the cloud provider, okay? Uh, it, the burden changes depending on what model you go for. And the most vanilla form is infrastructure as a service. In infrastructure as a service, basically you're doing everything, but the data center is belongs to the cloud provider. Apart from that, all the servers and the patching, everything you are doing, right? And maybe if you go to the other end, which is this uh, software as a service, then even the operating system patching and vulnerability scanning, which is one of the biggest headaches, you don't have to worry about, okay? The cloud provider will be doing everything. So this is first thing you need to know what model it is it which you're doing. And let's take an example of the AWS uh, uh, shared responsibility model. Uh, one quick thing guys, I'm going to be using AWS for most of the examples because uh, honestly, this is the one I've worked on the most and I'm working right now in AWS also. So I have a lot of experience in how this works, okay? And honestly, they are the one, the cloud provider, which has the most footprint. And a lot of, the, they have done a lot of good things when it comes to PCI compliant. Not to mean the other ones I haven't done, not saying that, but the, this is the one I have the most experience on. So this is basically how the shared responsibility model works, okay, in AWS. And it's pretty much the same in Azure and Google Cloud also. 
but basically AWS was responsible for security of the cloud and customers are responsible for security in the cloud. Okay. So if you're deploying something like you're deploying a server on AWS, right? It, the underlying infrastructure, the servers and everything, AWS will handle and they will do everything. But up, 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 like on top of that, the configuration, the patching, the scanning, the hardening, everything you have to do. So th this is how the shared responsibility model works, okay? So you have to make sure you are doing your job and AWS will definitely do their job. Similarly with Microsoft and Azure. But this model is not static as we saw, this can change. How can it change? So this is what I was talking about. So if you go to like the other models, like supposing you're using platform as a service like container services. So then AWS responsibility increases and what do you call uh, your responsibility go down a little bit. And if you're going to the other extreme, like you're using something like DynamoDB, which is a managed service in the cloud, like a database service. So over there, you don't even have to worry about patching. You don't have to worry about penetration testing or anything like that. <coughs> Sorry, uh, uh, AWS will be handling everything. So now you, I hope you understood why it's so important to know the shared responsibility model. This, this will really let you know where your PCI obligations are. So this is the first thing to get right, okay? Okay, so now you know, let's assume you know you have decided it. You know now what you'll be doing and what the cloud provider will be doing. So let's move to the other step, which is getting you cloud PCI certified, okay? Now I know what I have to do. How do I get myself certified? So the first obvious step will be uh, before you move anything onto the cloud, Please make sure that your cloud provider, you have that up-to-date PCI DSS certificate, okay? The good news is most companies are more than happy. The big providers, they're happy to share the PCI certificate with you. They give you access to free portals where you can easily download their up-to-date PCI certificates or their attestation of compliance. It's a great way to, it's also a great place to download their shared responsibility metrics, which will tell you requirement by requirement what they're doing and what you are doing, okay? So a few of these like portals, like the Google Cloud, they have their compliance reports manager. You can just go there, put PCI, and you will see this easily. You can download it, and it's uh, very easy to do. Okay. A similar level AWS, you have AWS Artifact. Okay. You can go there, just put PCI. You can get the basically uh, all of the reports you can download and show to your auditor if they ask you. So this will give you that first level assurance. Okay. One very, very important thing, guys, please. Just because AWS PCI is certified does not mean you are PCI certified. Please. A lot of people make their mistakes. They say that, okay, since AWS is certified, I don't have to worry about anything now. I'll just go ahead and like, what do you call, put anything I want, it'll be PCI certified. No, it does not mean like that. Let's take the example of S3. So supposing you're using S3. Now, if you go to the AOC, it will say S3 is PCI certified. That does not mean I can leave it unencrypted and put clear cardholder data. That will be a PCI uh, violation, okay? What does it mean? When What, do, what does AWS mean? When they say that S3 is PCI certified, it means it has the potential you have to configure it, okay? It does not mean automatically you can do anything on that service, it will be certified, okay? If you can set a particular configuration for a service, that means you have to set it properly as per PCI certificate requirements. The good thing is a lot of these things are automated already. So let's take this example. You can see the S3 bucket is unencrypted, right? And you're putting cardholder data there. So what do you have to do? You have to encrypt it with an KMS key and make sure all you're following all the PCI good practices there. Okay, so please remember that, okay? Now, what's the next step? The next step is to segment off your PCI zone. Uh, if you've done any PCI audits, you must have been familiar with this. It is one of the biggest headaches in PCI. You have to basically segment off your PCI zone and reduce the scope of the audit. So your cardholder data has to be in a specific segment because it is more secure. You don't want to like link it with your less secure networks or all that. But the good thing is the cloud can make it very easy. So like I'll give you an example. In AWS, you have an example, a, a concept known as accounts, okay? What you can do is you can put all your PCI workload in an isolated account. It's a best practice. So what happens is it's, it gives you a level of security which is simply not there on-prem because it completely isolates it. And you can put all your non-PCI workloads in a separate account. So unless you really open up connections, what do you call it? The, your PCI workloads will be completely uh, segregated. And you can do this in Azure also with subscriptions and all the other providers also. But this is one of the best advantages of the cloud. It can give you a segmentation, which is simply not possible on on-prem, okay? And okay, and okay, if you, don't, if you cannot do it at the account level, you say, no, I have to do it within the account, then you, have, you can do, go with VPC, something. This is more on the networking side. You can create subnets, routing. You have to isolate via security groups, okay? 
you you put in rules security rules like you don't have firewall the bad thing is rules often change which can lead to compromise segregation what will happen is you will open up a firewall or security group rule between your pci and non pci zone so this is where automation comes in and we'll talk about that shortly okay which will help you detect these sort of things and completely move it back to a secure state so okay so now we know that the cloud provider is pci certified and we know how to segment okay and then let's talk about the actual pci so this is where i'm talking about using the power of the cloud you you should once you've locked it down your responsibilities for being pci compliant and what the cloud provider is doing pci dss implementation in the cloud it's not that different from on prem but there are a few key differences you follow the same standard i mean it's not like the standard is changing but you deploy controls from a management console or the ci and you can use some very powerful native tools which are there okay or you can use some of the third party tools which are also there on the premise so let's take an example let's take an example of aws now on aws if the company calls security hub the in security hub it will give you a snapshot of your whole environment it will say look this is how much you are compliant with pci and what do you call this is these are the things you have to do it's a very good quick win it will give you immediately let you know where you stand with regards to pci dss uh, one important thing guys uh, it does not replace manual checks okay a lot of things like that there are in pci which requires manual evidence collection so it will not replace it but it gives you a very very good running start it will give you a head start and it will really kick start off your pci compliance and you can show this to the auditor also uh, similarly like with aw uh, azure sorry with microsoft azure they give you like a blueprint a blueprint is like basically it deploys infrastructure and it deploys azure resources which are already hardened as per pci so a lot of the ground work it will do for you okay so i hope you understand now now okay you have the basic infrastructure set up what else now you can look at the services so take the example of aws you have so many services which you have you can simply certify for p you can use them and configure this and i was always recommend using cloud native services why uh, because it's much easier and it lends itself to automation also so you don't have to keep manually checking stuff you can completely automate it and forget about it and it will give you lots of new use cases also things you could not do on prem uh, you can do with native aws services so let's take an example so you know one of the big problems a lot of comp uh, companies have like customers they raise tickets or they send emails they put card data there so you can, with aws native services you can put the card data like if you have card data in s3 bucket you can use things like amazon comprehend it's a machine learning service it will extract and replace all the pci data that is there card number you can it will simply replace it you don't have to worry about it or what about like images if you are scanning stuff what if there is card holder data in the image right what are you going to do then then again you have some very powerful services like amazon recognition what's it going to do it's going to extract that service it's going to find out where the image is which has card data you can send it to amazon comprehend it will it will completely redact it you can send it to lambda and you can on top of the image you can completely replace it all the card numbers so all of these things are natively possible in aws so just showing you some of the very very possible powerful possibilities which are there so it is up to you how you use it okay so now we move on to the last topic which is the most important i think which is automating pc ideas in the cloud now there's something a concept called compliance drift which i'm sure you're familiar with what happens is that you get certified and you're in a very good state right you feel you're very certified and you're secure and slowly slowly you start implementing new stuff new things get introduced changes happen and your compliance posture starts to go down so this is on prem it's a nightmare but on the cloud we can eliminate a lot of manual work and offload it off to automated aws services basically i call it pci compliance as code so you basically code pci compliance the good thing is like if you take the example of aws a lot of these hard work is already done for you you just have to deploy it okay they already have templates and what will happen if security have find something which is a violation of pci dss then actually you can send it it sends like a it can trigger a lambda function and it can go to systems manager and everything and it can actually revert it back so it has a lot of uh, list of deviations from pci and it will form okay, go do an automated remediation there so it's designed to help you with ongoing pci activities okay so this is just showing you the stop of it is once again it will not do it 100% you still have to do some manual work but your life will become considerably easier uh, apart from that you have other stuff also like devsecops for auto healing i'll put the link in the description but again this is similar to this so what will happen is once you have like uh, what do you call you deploy stuff 
you can have this complete conformance pack present in AWS. So if you make any changes, it will check. And if it sees that this is violating PCI, it will actually revert it and fix it. It's called auto healing. Okay. So you can put PCI DSS compliance as code within your pipelines. And let me know if in the comments section, if you want to move to me to do like a deep dive, I just want to give you a high level overview of this. So I hope you've understood now guys, how the cloud can make it, make it easier for you uh, to what do you call solve PCI DSS related problems and make your PCI compliance much more easier. Okay. So I hope this was useful for you guys. Please, if you like this video, do subscribe to this channel and do uh, like this video and share it as much as so that this channel gets more traction. Uh, thank you very much. Let me know in the comment section if you feel I could have added more stuff or if something you want me to explain more. Thank you guys and I will see you in the next video.